Merry Christmas, one and all. Anthony Samroff, international therapist and life coach. Nice to speak to you. It's been a little while since I've done one of these personal development live streams because I was in India, lucky me, for five, six weeks. And I've just moved into a new apartment and don't have internet yet. But I am at my parents' house for Christmas and I've got the ability to make a little video just now. So one thing, uh, I was hanging out with some friends recently and I was, we were talking about religion and different aspects and our own backgrounds. I'm from a Jewish background personally, but I don't have any strong religious beliefs. And But I know quite a little bit about different religions and theology. And uh, one of my friends was from a Catholic background and one recently uh, converted to Christianity after being a devout atheist and one of the things that came up was um, confession and I mentioned that that was just part of um, the Catholic Church. There, there's not a scriptural foundation for uh, confession as such in, in the Bible um, but obviously Catholics have excellent, uh, extra doctrines and I said that that was one of the things that I actually liked about the Catholic religion confessional. Well, my friend who's a Catholic had a different view because when she was growing up, um, she uh, was they, she felt like guilt was put upon her and they were forced to confess or to find something to say that they had to confess to. And what I guess I, I wanted to say about that was, well, that wasn't really my perception of what I liked about confession. And I just want to talk a little bit about that because obviously we live in a very secular society just now and we can talk about whether God exists or not. Um, uh, if you're of the, uh, the rational species, it uh, seems highly dubious, at least um, uh, that's what's generally accepted these days. But, you know, religions form as part of society for a reason and many of the rituals that exist in religion have served a psychological purpose. And for me, the idea of confession, uh, some of you know that I'm a voluntarist, a, a libertarian. A, um, I, don't, I believe that, the, that ethics are defined by um, what's voluntary, what's consensual, and that uh, people should minimise coercion. So, so I'm not for forcing the children into confessional or indoctrinating anyone, but I think that what confession used to do was fulfill the function of if you've got a guilty conscience, you don't know how to get over something, then you've got the option of, you know, going to see the priest, you don't have to pay any money, well, maybe he'll ask you to put in a donation, but essentially, um, the, the, the function of it is that you can get something off your chest, you can get some closure, you can talk about what you've done in the past, and uh, uh, get some uh, peace of mind, and, and put it behind you, and as I said, being in a, coming from a Jewish background I don't know if this is was the doctrine in the in the Jewish faith but I remember that the rabbi's wife told me that in the in the Jewish eye you would um if you if you wanted to apologize for something you first apologized to the person that you wronged and then you went um then you went and apologized to God you don't apologize to God first you you apologize to the the person that you wronged but um so I guess what I want to do is float out this idea that now that we do live in a secular society and most people will not go to a confessional to when they've got a guilty conscience to um, speak what's on their mind and maybe clear the slate and get things off their chest, what kind of rituals do we have our, at our disposal? What kind of things can we do to draw a line under our past grievances. We've all done things we regret. We've all done things that hurt people. And sometimes, you know, I think of something that I might have done years and years ago and I still, oh, I feel ashamed or I feel guilty or embarrassed that I that I let myself behave in such an unwholesome manner. Like, I know I'm a different person now. You can't step into the same stream twice. Well, one thing that definitely helps me is journaling. And I like to write about things that I... If you... Th if when you think about it, if when you remember it, you still have an emotional reaction to it, you ain't over it yet, you're not done with it yet. So one thing that really, really works for me is uh, writing about things, and sometimes you have to write about things two or three times. And you can do this in different ways. The first one is just make an account of that thing that happened that you still feel guilty about, and why you 
what happened, how you felt at the time. It's important to talk, to write your feelings because <clears throat> if you just get a fact, give a factual account, then you're only staying on the surface. You're not really making sense of your own ideas and um, processing things through in a way that you, when you when you write about uh, all the little ideas and thoughts at the edge of your consciousness that you've not quite put together yet, uh, it's like a join the dots. They become nice and discreet and tidy and you can put them away. Now, if you've written about something and that's not done the trick, another thing you can do is kind of recontextualize things. So sometimes I've done, um, uh, I can write a letter as though I'm, I'm speaking to that person to get everything off my chest. Obviously, it's not necessarily to send it, especially if it's something that happened years ago and it's just bothering me. And another thing is to like imagine having a conversation with that person where you were able to, and you can do this in journaling form, to say everything and get it off your chest and also, um, yeah, make sense of it and and um, have a conversation with them, a hypothetical conversation where they say what you feel like you would like to hear or or they say what it was like for them. You might need to use your imagination, like um, show your understanding of the consequences of your actions, like by putting yourself in the other person's shoes, that's not to deepen the guilt, that's first to, to make the connection and then um, hear what they have to say and hear them understanding you and um, write down the things that you were thinking that you've since realized that were wrong, which would make you do what you did. So I think that's uh, really en enough from me. What I'd like to hear from you is what do you think? What rituals, what practices could we adopt as secularists, as many of us atheists um, who don't believe in any god or gods, uh, or agnostics who might be uh, open to the idea that there, there is the existence of God but don't necessarily know that. What tools do you think we have our on uh, our disposal to overcome guilt? So thanks very much for tuning in. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year where it comes, and lots more live streams to come in the new year.